the jaina philosophy the jainas recount the names of 24 teachers tirthankaras through whom their faith is believed to have come down from unknown antiquity the first of these teachers was rishabadeva the last was vardhamana also styled mahavira the great hero he is said to have lived in the 6th century bc during the time of gautama buddha the teacher who immediately preceded vardhamana was parsvanatha who lived in the 9th century bc the other 22 teachers belong to prehistoric ages the word jina etymologically means conqueror it is the common name applied to 24 teachers because they have conquered all passions raga and dvesha and have attained liberation the jainas do not believe in god they adore the tirthankaras or the founders of the faith these are the liberated souls who were once in bondage but became through their own efforts free perfect omniscient omnipotent and all blissful the jainas believe that every spirit jiva that is in bondage now can follow the example set by the jainas and attain like them perfect knowledge power and joy this is the great element of optimism that inspires every true jaina with absolute self confidence the possibility of the realization of absolute perfection through personal effort is for him not a mere speculation but a promise repeated by the life of every liberated saint in course of time the followers of jainism were divided into two sects well known as the swetambaras and digambaras the difference between them lies however not so much in the basic philosophical doctrines as in some minor details of faith and practice the teachings of the jinas are accepted by both the sects but the digambaras are most rigorous and puritanic while the swetambaras are more accommodating to the common frailties of men the digambaras hold for example that ascetics should give up all possessions even clothes whereas the swetambaras hold that they should put on white clothes again according to the digambaras a saint who has obtained perfect knowledge needs no food and women cannot obtain liberation without being born once more as men the swetambaras do not accept these views the jainism jainism possesses a vast literature mostly in prakrita uh, the uh, canonical or authoritative works uh, accepted by all sects uh, are said to contain the knowledge uh, contain the teachings of last tirthankara mahavira they are too many to be mentioned here much of the early literature has been lost when jainism had to defend itself against the criticism of other schools it adopted for this purpose the technical philosophical terminology of sanskrit and thus developed its literature and sanskrit as well the philosophical outlook of jainism is common sense realism and pluralism the objects perceived by us are real and there are and there are many the world consists of two kinds of reality living and non living every living being has a spirit or soul jiva however imperfect its body may be avoidance of avoidance of all injury to life ahimsa plays therefore an important role in jaina ethics along with this respect for life there is in jainism another great element namely respect for the opinion of others the last attitude justified by a metaphysical theory of reality as uh, many faced uh, anekanta vada and consequent logical doctrine syadvada that every judgment is subject to some condition and limitations and various judgments uh, about the same reality may therefore be true each in its own sense subject to its own condition uh, the philosophy of the jainas may be con- con- conveniently uh can uh, convenient discussed under three topics that is epistemology or theory of knowledge including logic metaphysics and ethics and religion the jaina theory of knowledge the nature and kinds of knowledge consciousness is the inseparable essence of every soul according to the jainas it is not as the karvakas hold a mere accidental property arising only under some condition uh, conditions moreover consciousness is conceived like the sun's light capable of manifesting itself and everything else unless some obstruction prevents it from reaching its object had there been no obstacles the soul would have been omniscient omniscience is a uh, potentiality inherent in every soul as it is however we find that you know, ordinary souls are all more or less ignorant their knowledge is limited the jainas hold that this limitation is due to the obstacles created by different karmas which obstruct in different degrees the natural consciousness of the soul and thus deprive it of its omniscience the body the senses and the mind manas are all constituted by karmas and the soul's power is limited by them like other thinkers the jainas admit the twofold classification of knowledge into immediate and immediate aporoksa and paroksa but they point out that what is ordinarily regarded as immediate knowledge is only relatively immediate perception of external or internal objects through the senses indriya or mind manas is immediate as compared with inference still such knowledge cannot be said to be absolutely immediate because even here the soul knows 
through the medium of something else the senses or manas in addition to such ordinary or empirical uh, vyavaharika uh, immediate knowledge there is also a really or absolutely uh, paramartika immediate knowledge which a soul attains by removing its karma obstacles in such knowledge the soul's consciousness becomes immediately related to objects without the medium of senses etc simply by the removal of the karmas that prevented it from reaching these objects three different kinds of such really immediate knowledge are distinguished when a person has partially destroyed and allayed the influences of karmas he acquires the power of knowing objects which have forms but are too distant or uh, minute or obscure to be absorbed by the senses or manas such immediate knowledge by the unaided soul is however limited as its objects are limited and therefore it is called uh, aradhi jnana limited knowledge again when a person has overcome hatred jealousy etc which create obstacles that stand in the way of uh, knowing other minds he can have a direct access to the present and uh, lack of knowledge are completely removed from the soul uh, there arises in it absolute knowledge or omniscience this is called keval jnana uh, only the uh, liberated souls have such knowledge uh, these are then uh, the three kinds of extraordinary or extrasensory perceptions which are immediate par excellence but uh, in addition to these there are the two kinds of ordinary knowledge possessed by an average person these are called mati and shruti uh, shruta uh, there are differences of opinion among jaina writers regarding the exact meanings of these terms mm, but ordinarily mati is taken to mean any kind of knowledge uh, which we obtain through the senses or through manas thus understood mati includes ordinary immediate knowledge or internal and external perception memory recognition and inference so the uh, is knowledge obtained from authority the jainas given account of the process by which ordinary perception takes place and is retained at first there is only dis- direct uh, distinct sensation say of a sound it is not yet known what it means this primary state of consciousness is called uh, avagraha uh, that is grasping of the object then arises the query what is the sound this questioning state of the mind is called iha the uh that is query then comes a definite judgment like this is the sound of a car this is called avaya removal of doubt then what is ascertained is retained in the mind this retention is called dharana that is holding in the mind shruta the second kind of ordinary knowledge is mostly interpreted as knowledge obtained from what is heard uh, from others this includes all kinds of knowledge derived from spoken or written authority as the understanding of any authority is dependent on the perception of sounds or written letters shruta is said to be preceded by mati it is pointed out further that these two kinds of ordinary knowledge namely mati and shruta as well as lowest kind of uh, immediate extra extraordinary knowledge namely avadi uh, or not absolutely free from chances of error but the two higher kinds of immediate and extra sensory knowledge uh, mana paryaya and kevala are never liable to any error for ordinary purposes the jainas accept the general view that there are three pramanas namely perception inference and testimony uh, the tarvaka view criticized in accepting non perceptual sources of knowledge like inference and testimony the jaina writers feel it necessary to justify their view by refuting the karvaka theory that perception is the only source of valid knowledge they ask if a karvaka were asked to upon uh, to show why even perception should not be rejected as an uh, invalid source of knowledge what would he say he would either remain silent and thus confess that he has no reason to support his view or hold that perception is valid because it is not misleading if he adopts the first course his view is a mere ipse dixit an opinion unsupported by reason and therefore not acceptable if he adopts the second alternative then he supports his view by a reason and therefore he is himself taking the help of inference besides if the karvaka admits that the uh, perception is valid because it is uncontradicted and not misleading for similar reason inference and testimony also should be accepted if the karvaka says to this that inference and testimony are sometimes misleading then it is possible to point out that even perception is sometimes misleading so the only reasonable conclusion uh, is that any source of knowledge be it perception or inference or testimony should be regarded as valid uh, in so far as it yields uh, knowledge that does not prove misleading the criterion uh, of validity should be the harmony samvada of knowledge with the practical consequences to which it leads moreover when the karvaka denies the existence of uh, non perceptible objects uh, like life after death he goes beyond perception and infers the non existence of the objects you know, from the fact Uh, of their non perception even when the karvaka says about perception in general that it is valid he goes beyond the perceived and uh, perceived cases of perception found to be valid in the past and infers from general similarity something about the future unperceived uh, case of cases of perception as well similarly when the karvaka argues uh, with his critics he infers their thoughts from their expressions uh, from otherwise the karvaka 
uh, for otherwise the karvaka would not take part in any discussion hence the karvaka view that perception is the only valid source of knowledge is not correct the jaina theory of judgment syadwada or the uh, theory that every judgment is relative the jainas point out that different kinds of immediate and the immediate knowledge that we possess about objects show that every object has innumerable characters an omniscient being uh, can obtain through kevala jnana an immediate knowledge of an object in all its new innumerable aspects but imperfect beings look out, look at objects from one particular point of view at a time and have consequently the knowledge of only one aspect or character of the thing such partial knowledge about one of the innumerable aspects of the of an object is called by, uh, by the jaina writers naya uh, the judgment uh, uh, judgment uh, pa, 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 Paramarsa, based on such partial knowledge, is also called as uh, every judgment that we pass in daily life about uh, object is therefore true only in reference to the standpoint occupied on the aspect of the object considered. It is because we forget this limitation and regard our judgments as unconditionally true that we come to quarrel and disagree very often, very often in life. The story of the blind man who formed their ideas for of an elephant by touching its legs, ears, tail, and trunk respectively and thus came to quarrel about the real shape of an animal illustrates this truth. They quarreled because each thought that his knowledge was the only true and complete knowledge and should be accepted unconditionally. The quarrel was over as soon as each of them realized that his knowledge was only of one of the many parts of the animal. The various systems of philosophy which gave uh, different accounts of the universe similarly occupy different views, uh, different points of view and discover the different aspects of the many-sided universe. They quarrel because they do not bear in mind that each account is true only from its own standpoint. And is subject to certain conditions. Uh, they fail to realize, therefore, that the uh, different uh, views may be true, like the different descriptions of, an, uh, the, of the elephant. In view of these facts, the Jainas insist that every judgment naya should be uh, qualified by some word like somehow, syat, in some respect, so that the limitation of this judgment and the possibility of other alternative judgments from other points of view may be always clearly borne in mind. For example, instead of judgment like the elephant is like pillar, it should be said to remove the chance of confusion somehow that is with respect to its legs the elephant is like a pillar similarly in perceiving a black earthen jug existing in a room at a particular time we should not assert unconditionally the jug exists but should rather say somehow the jug exists which should remind us that the judgment is true only with regard to the uh, many conditions of space time quality etc under which the jug exists the qualified uh, judgment somehow the jug exists uh, syat, uh, gata asti should prevent the possibility of the misapprehension that the pot exists at all times or in every place uh, or that uh, a pot of any other color, shape, etc. exists. The unqualified judgment, the jug exists, leaves the possibility of such misapprehension. The theory of the Jainas has come, down, come to be known as Syadwada. It is the view that every ordinary uh, judgment passed by imperfect minds like ours holds good only of the particular aspect of the object judged and of the point of view from which the judgment is passed. The Jaina view uh, is quite in keeping with the view accepted by Western logicians generally, uh, namely that every judgment is passed in a particular universe of discourse or context and must be understood only in reference thereto. The universe of discourse is constituted by different factors like space, time, degree, quality, etc., which are left unmentioned partly because they are uh, obvious and partly because there are they are too many to be stated or ex uh, stated exhaustively. Now, if these conditions cannot be exhaustively enumerated, um, uh, as some modern logicians like Schiller also admit, it is good for the sake of uh, precision to qualify the judgment explicitly by a word like somehow syat the principle underlying syadwada uh, makes jaina thinkers catholic in their outlook they entertain and accept the views of other philosophers as different possible versions of the universe from different points of view the only thing that the jainas dislike in other thinkers is the dogmatic claim of each that he alone is in the right this claim leads to the fallacy of exclusive prediction, predication, exclusive predication. Ekanta Vada. Against such a fallacy of philosophical speculation, a protest has been raised recently in America by the neo-realists who have called it the fallacy of exclusive particularity. But no Western or Eastern philosopher has so earnestly tried to avoid this error in practice as the Jainas have done sapta banginaya or the seven forms of judgment ordinarily logic distinguishes two kinds of judgment 
అఫర్మేటివ్ అండ్ నెగటివ్ ద జైనాస్ డిస్టింగ్విష్ సెవెన్ కైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ జడ్జ్మెంట్ ఇంక్లూడింగ్ దీస్ టూ ఎనీ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ మే బీ డిస్క్రైబ్డ్ అఫర్మేటివ్లీ బై అ జడ్జ్మెంట్ విచ్ ప్రెడికేట్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్ ఎనీ ఆఫ్ ద క్యారెక్టర్స్ ఇట్ ప్రొసెసర్స్ ఆర్ ఇట్ మే బీ డిస్క్రైబ్డ్ నెగటివ్లీ బై అ జడ్జ్మెంట్ విచ్ డినైస్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్ క్యారెక్టర్స్ బిలాంగింగ్ టు అదర్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్స్ బట్ ఆబ్సెంట్ ఇన్ దిస్ these two are the affirmative and negative judgments ordinarily recognized but the jainas qualify each with somehow syat to emphasize its conditional or relative character affirmative judgments about a jug for example would be like somehow the jug is in the room that is in the room at a particular place and particular time and as a jug of a particular description somehow the jug is red that is not always red but only during a particular time or under particular circumstances and the red is of a specific shade etc the general form of all affirmative judgments can then be symbolically represented as somehow uh, yes is t syat asti again negative judgments about an object would be like somehow the jar is not outside the room meaning that the jar is jar of that particular kind at that particular time time etc is not uh, outside somehow the jar is not black that is not black at the particular space and time and under those conditions etc uh, we find then that the general form of all negative judgments somehow yes is not p syat nasti when however we have to describe the complex fact that the jar is sometimes red and sometimes not we must have a compound judgment like somehow the jar is and also is not red a general form of this judgment would therefore be somehow yes is and also is not p syat asti uh, sanasti sa this is the third form of judgment recognized by jaina logic this form is obtained by combining successively the points of view of the uh, first two judgments into one composite point of view the necessity of such compound judgment lies in the need of a comprehensive view of the positive and the negative characters of an object a jar is black when raw and red when it is baked but if we are asked what is the real color of the jar always or under certain conditions the only honest reply would be that the jar cannot be described then that is under the conditions of the question under such circumstances when we are forced to uh, predicate simultaneously of any object characters which are incompatible being contrary or contradictory our judgment according to the jainas would be of the general form somehow yes is indescribable syat avaktavyam avaktavyam this is the fourth kind of judgment recognized by the jaina by jaina logic recognition of this fourth form of judgment is of great philosophical value it points out first that thought of an object can be described from different standpoints in different aspects separately or successively it cannot be described at all if no such distinction of standpoint and aspect is made an object in general is an indescribable entity secondly this also points out that philosophical wisdom does not always consist in the ability to answer a question by a straight affirmative or negative but also uh, Uh, in realizing that some con- questions by their very nature are unanswerable thirdly the recognition of this form of judgment uh, shows that the jaina logic does not violate the principle of contradiction on the contrary it shows that obedience to this law makes the jaina confess that incompatible characters cannot be simultaneously predicated of any subject in the same aspect the other three of the seven forms of judgment are obtained by combining successively each of the first three standpoints with the fourth thus by combining the first and the fourth successively we get the fifth form of judgment somehow yes is p is also uh, indescribable syat asti sa avaktavyam sa when we consider together uh, from a comprehensive point of view the fact that a jug sometimes is red but also that without reference to any particular uh time or state it cannot be described as having any predictable character our judgment is of the form the judge is somehow red uh, but is also somehow indescribable similarly combining again the second and the fourth standpoint successively we have the sixth judgment of the general form somehow s yes is not p and is also indescribable syat nasti sa avaktavyam uh, sa lastly combining successively the third with the fourth point of view we get the seventh form of judgment somehow yes is p also is not p and is indescribable too syat asti sa nasti sa avaktavyam sa if we combine simultaneously any of the first three points of uh, view with the fourth instead of doing so successively we shall have 
in each case the simultaneous predication of incompatible characters like is and and is indescribable and or is not and is indescribable or is not is is not and is indescribable hence in each case the judgment would be the same in form as in the fourth case namely some of yes is indescribable syat asyat uh, avaktavyam therefore though there are innumerable aspects of everything the uh, forms of judgment would be only seven neither more nor less to sum up jaina logic recognizes the following seven kinds of conditional judgment uh, sapta bang uh, sapta banginaya uh, samo yes is p syat asti samo yes is not p syat nasti somehow yes is p and is also not p syat asti sa nasti sa samo yes is indescribable syat avaktavyam samo yes is p and is also indescribable syat asti sa avaktavyam sa samo yes is not p and is also indescribable syat nasti sa avaktavyam sa samo yes is p and is also not p and also indescribable स्यात् अस्ति स नास्ति स अवक्तव्यं अवक्तव्यं स द जैना डॉक्ट्रिन ऑफ स्याद्वादा इज समटाइम्स कंपेयर्ड टू द प्रॅग्मॅटिसम ऑफ सम वेस्टर्न थिंकर्स इट इज ट्रू दॅट प्रॅग्मॅटिक लॉजिशियन लाईक शिल्ल ऑल्सो रेकग्नाइज द ट्रूथ दॅट नो जजमेंट इज ट्रू ऑर फॉल्स विदाउट पर्टिक्युलर रेफरन्स टू कॉन्टॅक्स्ट अँड पर्पस इवन अ सो कॉल्ड सेल्फ एव्हिडंट जजमेंट uh like a square is not a circle or 2 and 2 or not 4 is true only in a specific sense according to schiller this is striking point of resemblance but there is a very diff- uh, very great difference uh, also which should not be forgotten the jainas are realists but this uh, but that pragmatists have a distinct idealistic basis bias according to the jainas the different judgments about an object are not simply uh different real aspects of the object the jainas would accept therefore a realistic view of truth which is rejected by thorough going pragmatists the jaina syadvada is sometimes compared with the western theory of relativity there are two kinds of relativity idealistic as of uh, protagoras berkeley schiller and realistic as of whitehead uh, or bodin and if the jaina is to be called a relativist he must be understood to be of the realistic type our judgments about things are relative but relative to or dependent upon not simply the mood of judging mind but upon the relational characters of the many sided reality itself another misunderstanding often found is the interpretation of the jaina word syat as maybe this would impart a skeptical or agnostic form to the jaina theory and make it look like the uh, view of the greek skeptic pyro who also recommended the qualification of every judgment with a phrase like maybe but uh, it should be noted that the jaina is not a skeptic it is not the uncertainty of a judgment but its conditional or relative character that is expressed by the addition of the qualifying particle uh, syat subject to the conditions or the universe of discourse under which any judgment is made the judgment is valid beyond all doubt there is therefore no room for skepticism the jaina metaphysics the jainas hold that every object known by us has innumerable characters ananta dharmakam vastu let us try to understand a little more clearly the implication of this view every object is what it is because of its positive and negative characters the positive characters which determine for example an object uh, like a man or his size color shape weight constitution hereditary uh, heredity family race nationality education employment place of birth date of birth habitation age etc and the numberless relations uh, he bears to the uncountable other objects of the world the negative characters which determine the man consists of uh, what he is not to know him fully we should know how he is distinguishable from everything else we should know for example that he is not a european nor a chinese nor a negro etc that he is not a christian nor a mohammedan nor a zoroastrian etc uh, not dishonest not foolish not selfish etc as the negative characters of the man consist in his distinctions from all other objects uh, in the universe the number of these would therefore be far greater than that of the positive characters if we consider then an object in the light of its own position positive characters and also in the light of the characters of all other objects which are absent in it the object would no longer 
uh, appear to be a simple thing having only a limited number of qualities as we ordinarily take it to be the object on the contrary uh, turns out uh, to be one possessed of unlimited characters but uh, when moreover the element of time is taken into consideration and it is uh, and it is remembered that the object takes on new characters with the change of time the object is found really to possess infinite characters ananta dharma jaina writers therefore remark that he who knows one object fully knows everything only an omniscient person kevali can have such a complete knowledge of an object for practical purposes uh, vyavahara is a partial knowledge of what an object is or is not is of course quite sufficient but this should not make us think as we do that a finite object is really possessed of limited characters nor should we think that our ordinary knowledge about it is complete and perfect the jaina conception of substance we have just seen that uh, objects have many characters as in common con- con- common conversation so also in philosophy a distinction is made uh, between the characters dharma and that which possesses the characters dharmi the latter is generally called a substance dravya the jaina accept this common philosophical view of substance uh, but they point out that there are two kinds of characters found in every substance essential and accidental the essential essential characters of a substance uh, remain in the substance as long as the substance remains without these the substance will cease to be what it is consciousness for example is an essential character of the soul again the accidental characters of a uh, substance come and go they succeed one another desires volitions pleasure and pain are such accidental characters possessed by the soul substance it is through such acts uh, characters that a substance undergoes change or modification they may also be called therefore modes the jainas call an essential unchanging character guna and an accidental changing character paryaya or paryaya a substance is defined therefore as that which possesses qualities gunas as well as modes paryayas the world is composed of substances of different kinds in so far as the essential characters of the ultimate substance uh, substances are abide, uh, abiding the world is permanent and in so far as the accidental characters undergo modification the world also changes the jainas therefore hold that Uh, those philosophers like the bodhas who say that there is nothing really permanent in the universe and that everything changes from moment to moment uh, uh, sanika vada are one sided and dogmatic equally mistaken also are philosophers like the monistic vedantins who declare that change is unreal and that reality is absolutely unchanging nitya vada each of them looks at one side ekanta of reality only and thus commits the fallacy of exclusive predication change and permanence are both real it should not be thought uh, uh, contradictory to say that a particular substance or the universe as a whole is both subject to change and free from it change is true of the substance in one respect syat whereas permanence is true in another uh, uh, respect syat the contradiction vanishes when we remember that each predication is relative and uh, not absolute as taught by syadvada a substance is real sat reality consists of three factors permanence originens origination and decay in substance there is the unreality this parma changing essence and therefore uh, it is permanent there are again the origin and decay of its changing modes paryaya hence all the three elements that characterize reality or there in a substance by accepting this criteria criteria criterion of reality the jainas reject the bodha view that reality consists in causal efficiency that is uh, that an object is real if it is capable of causing any effect the bodha criterion is faulty because according to it even an illusory snake must be called real as it can cause effects like fear flight etc from this faulty criterion of reality the bodhas deduce the theory of the momentariness of things which therefore turns out to be fallacious against the one sided theory of momentariness the jainas also adduce the following arguments if everything be momentary the soul also would be and then we would not explain memory recognition the immediate feeling of personal identity etc liberation uh, would then be meaningless because there would be no permanent soul to be liberated no moral life would be possible then because a momentary person could not attempt to attain any end the work of the person who would begin 
uh, an effort would bring about a fruit that would be enjoyed by the person succeeding him consequently there would be no moral law the consequences of one's own action would be lost to him krita pranasa and the consequences of another man's action would befall him akrita byu akrita byu pagama the mere momentary uh, states would not even constitute any individual series because without something permanent running through the changing modes the different changing states cannot be held together to form a continuous individual neither perception nor inference reveals the existence of anything in the world in which there is only change and no element of continuity classification of substances the broadest classification of substances according to the jaina into the extended and the non extended there is only one substance namely time kala which is devoid of extension all other substances possess extension they are called by the general name uh, asti kaya because every substance of this kind exists asti uh, like a body kaya possessing extension substances possessing extension asti kayas are subdivided into two kinds namely the living jiva and the non living ajiva living substances jivas are identical the souls again can be classified into those that are emancipated or perfect mukta and those that are in bondage baddha uh, baddha or bandha uh, the souls in bondage are again of two kinds those that are capable of movement trasa and those that are immobile stavara the immobile living substances have the most imperfect kinds of bodies they live uh, in the uh, they live in the five kinds of bodies made of earth water fire air or plants respectively they have only the sense of touch they possess therefore tactual consciousness the mobile living substances have bodies of different degrees of perfection and uh, variously possess 2 3 4 or 5 senses a uh, souls are living substances like worms have two senses senses namely those of touch and taste those like ants have three senses namely those of touch ta- taste and smell those like bees possess four senses namely those uh, of touch taste smell and sight uh, higher animals like bees uh birds and men have five senses namely those of touch taste uh smell sight and hearing non living substances possessing extension are uh, dharma adharma akasha and pudgala the following table will clearly show the above scheme classification substance dravya extended astikaya non extended anastikaya example time kala a uh, uh, extended substance asti kaya can be divided into animate and inanimate J- animate is jiva inanimate is ajiva animate uh, is classified into emancipated mukta and fettered uh, um, mukta fettered is bandha badha uh, inanimate uh, dharma adharma akasha pudgala uh, pudgala is uh, divided into atoms anu of earth water fire air uh of uh, and uh, another thing was of, of uh, compounds sangata fettered uh, under animate jiva uh, is classified again into moving trasa and non moving stavara uh, non moving those living in bodies of earth etc uh, moving can be classified into five sensed four sensed three sensed and two sensed five sensed uh, example men four sensed bees three sensed example ants two sensed worms the soul or jiva uh, a jiva or a soul is a conscious substance consciousness is the essence of the soul it is always present in the soul though its nature and degree may vary souls may theoretically arranged in a continuous series according to the degrees of consciousness at the highest end of the scale would be perfect souls that have overcome all karmas and attained omniscience at the lowest end would stand the most imperfect souls which inhabit bodies of earth uh, water fire air or vegetable in them life and consciousness appear to be absent but really even here consciousness of a tactual kind is present only consciousness in a, is in a dormant form moving to the overpowering influence of karma, karma obstacles midway between uh, would lie souls having 
two two five senses like worms ants bees and men it is a soul that knows things performs activities enjoys pleasures suffers pains and illumines itself and other objects the soul is eternal but it also undergoes change of states it is different from the body and its existence is directly proved by its consciousness of itself owing to the inclined inclinations generated by its past actions a jiva comes to inhabit different bodies successively like a light it illumines or renders conscious the entire body in which it lives though it has no form murti it acquires like a light uh, uh, the size and form of the body wherein it lives form usually is rupa here it is referred to as murti uh, uh, so that is question mark it is in this sense that a jiva though formless is said to occupy space or possess extension the jiva is not fi- infinite but coextensive with the body as it can immediately know objects only within the body consciousness is not present everywhere but only in the body students of western philosophy find it difficult to understand how a soul can possess both consciousness and extension qualities which are diametrically opposite opposed according to descartes extension uh, descartes thinks is the exclusive quality of uh, uh, material substances and consciousness is the exclusive quality of the soul Uh, but the soul as proved by descartes is essentially a thinking being and thought seems to have no connection with uh, space or matter but the jainas conceive the soul primarily as a living being jiva consciousness is found in every part of a living body and if consciousness be the character of the soul uh, the soul should be admitted to be present in every part of the body and therefore to occupy space the soul's ability to pervade space is admitted by other indian thinkers as also by many greek philosophers like plato and even by some modern realist philosophers like alexander it should be born in uh, mind however that a soul's um, occupying uh, space simply means its presence in the different parts of a uh, uh, uh space and not filling a part of space like a material body a material body uh, fills a part of space in such a way that while it is there in uh, while it is there Uh, no other matter can occupy it but a soul's presence in a particular space does not prevent another soul's presence there two souls can may be present in the same place the jainas point out uh, just as two lights can illumine the same area uh, so in the previous stanza uh, please note in the previous stanza philosophers like alexander was mentioned Ale- uh, alexander is usually referred to as uh, king here uh, which alexander philosopher is been referred is a slight question mark uh, so the J- jaina philosophy next coming back continuing uh, the jainas jaina philosophers feel it necessary to meet the uh, karvaka views regarding the soul gunaratna a great jaina thinker um, g- gives elaborate arguments to meet karvaka skepticism and proves the existence of the soul we may state here the purport of arguments uh, perfect of Uh, of his arguments the existence of the soul is directly proved by such uncontradicted immediate experience as i feel pleasure uh, when we perceive the quality of a substance we say we perceive the substance for example on seeing a rosy color we hold that we perceive the substance rose to which the color belongs on similar grounds we can hold that the soul is directly perceived because we immediately perceive such characters of the soul as pleasure pain remembrance volition doubts knowledge etc the existence of the soul may also be indirectly proved by uh, inferness like the following the body can be moved and controlled at will like a car and therefore there must be something that moves and controls it uh, which is uh, as uh, thomas aquinas argument saint thomas aquinas argument the senses of sight hearing uh, Uh, etc are only instruments and there must be some agent who employs them again there must be some efficient cause or producer of the body because material objects which have a beginning are found to require some agent for shaping their material cause thus in different ways the existence of a substance like the soul can also be inferred the karvaka uh, holds that the consciousness is a product of the material elements but we never perceive anywhere the generation of the consci- generation of consciousness uh, by the unconscious material elements the karvaka believes that perception is the only valid source of knowledge how can he then believe 
in what perception fails to show even if inference were accepted as valid by the karvaka uh, it would not prove that consciousness is the effect of matter or the material body because if the body were the cause of consciousness there would be no absence of consciousness so long as the body existed and the consequently loss of consciousness in sleep swoon or in a dead body would be impossible because uh, we find that there is no relation of concomitant concomitant variation between the body and consciousness the development and decay of the body are not invariably followed by corresponding changes of consciousness so no cause casual connection between matter and consciousness can be proved uh, even by inference the karvaka would say perhaps say that uh, though every kind of matter does not produce consciousness yet when matter is organized into a living body it produces uh, consciousness uh, in reply to this it is pointed out that uh, but for some organizer matter would not be formed uh, into a living body and that this organizer is the soul itself judgments like i am stout i am thin on which the karvaka tried to tries to prove that the soul is identical with the body must be understood figuratively or not literally uh, the soul sometimes treats the body as itself and because it is intimately interested in the body uh, again if the soul were absolutely unreal the negative judgment there is no um, there is no soul in the body would be unintelligible denial of something in any place implies the knowledge of its existence somewhere in some form apart from all other arguments to say that the self does not exist is as absurd as to say my mother is barren or this son the giver of light does not exist the inanimate substances are ajivas <laughs> the physical world in which souls live is constituted by the material bodies that the souls occupy and other material objects that form their environment but in addition to these material substances there are space time and the conditions of motion and rest without which the world and its events cannot be fully explained let us consider these different substances one by one matter or pudgala matter in jaina philosophy is called pudgala which etymologically etymologically means that which is liable to integration and disintegration material substances can combine together to form larger and larger holes and can also break up into smaller and smaller parts the smallest parts of matter which cannot be further divided being partless are called atoms anu two or more such atoms may combine together to form compounds uh, sangatha or standa uh, our bodies and the objects of nature are such compounds of material atoms uh, mind manas and speech and breath are also the products of matter a material substance pudgala possesses the four qualities of touch taste smell and color these qualities are possessed by atoms and also by their products the com- and the, com- and the compounds sound is not an original quality like these four as most other indian philosophers hold the jaina points out that sound along with uh, light heat shadow darkness union disunion fineness grossness shape is produced later by the accidental modifications of matter space or akasha the function of space is to afford room for the existence of all extended substances soul matter dharma and adharma all exist in space though space is imperceptible imperceptible its existence is known by an inference like the following substances which are extended can have extension only in some space some place and that is called akasha though to be extended is the very nature of some substances and no substance which lacks that nature can be extended made extended by uh, space yet it is also true that uh, to be extended a substance requires space as a necessary condition it should not be thought that extension is explained fully by substances extended without the opposition of some other condition like space for substances are those that occupy uh, or pervade and the space is that which is occupied or pervaded space is not the same as extension as descartes thought uh, but it is the uh, locus of extension or of extended things as locke held uh, the jaina distinguishes two kinds of space the space containing the world where souls and other substances live loka kasa and empty space beyond such world aloka kasa time or kala the kala as uh, uma swami states makes possible the uh, continue uh, the continuity modification movement newness and the oldness of substances like space time is all time also is inferred though not perceived it is inferred as a condition without which substances could not have the characters just mentioned though it is true that time alone cannot cause a thing to have the characters without time a thing cannot endure or continue to exist duration implies moments of time uh, in which existence is prolonged modification or change of states also cannot be conceived without time a mango cannot be green uh, and ripe only 
successively that is at different moments of time and without the supposition of time distinctions we cannot understand how a thing can possess such incompatible characters similarly movement which implies the assumption of successive states uh, by uh by an uh, by an object can be conceived only with the supposition of time lastly the distinction between the old and the new the earlier and the later cannot be explained without time there are uh, therefore uh, the grounds on which the existence of time can be inferred the reason why time is not regarded as an astikaya uh, is that the time is one indivisible substance one and the same substance uh, it is pre- is present everywhere in the world unlike all other substances called astikayas time is devoid of extension in space jaina writers sometimes distinguished between real time uh, para para matika kala and empirical or conventional time um, vyavaharika kala also called samaya continuity or duration uh, vartana is the mark of real time it is this later samaya which is conventionally divided into moments hours and is limited by a beginning and an end but real time is formless and eternal by imposing conventional limitations and distinctions on real time empirical time is produced uh, some jaina teachers gunaratna observes do not uh, admit time as a separate substance but regard it as a mode paryaya of the uh, other substances dharma and adharma like space and time these two substances also are inferentially proved to exist mobility and immobility motion and rest are the grounds of such inference the jaina argues that just as the movement of a fish in the river the though initiated by the fish itself would not be possible without the medium of water which is therefore a necessary condition similarly the movement of a soul or a material thing requires one some auxiliary condition without which its motion would not be possible such a condition is a substance called dharma dharma can only favor or help the motion of moving objects it cannot make a non moving object move just as water cannot make a fish move adharma on the contrary is the substance that helps the restful state or immobility of objects just as a shade of a tree helps a traveler to rest or the earth supports things that rest on it it cannot however arrest the movement of any moving object dharma and adharma though the supposed are also similar in so far as both are eternal formless non moving and both pervade the entire moving swim, entire world space loka kaksa as conditions of motion and rest both are passive and not active dharma and adharma are used here in these technical senses and not in their ordinary moral senses that is merit and demerit regarding all the four substances space time dharma and adharma it should be noted that as ca- as causal conditions they all have peculiar causal conditions they all have a peculiar status the causal conditions karanas may be distinguished into three chief kinds agent as potter is of the pot instrument as the potter's wheel is of the pot and the material as clay is of the pot space time etc come under the categories of instrumental conditions but they should be distinguished from ordinary conditions of that kind being more indirect and passive than ordinary instrumental conditions gunaratna gives uh, them therefore a special name apeksha karana uh, the stone on which the potter's wheel rests may be cited as condition uh, of uh, this kind in relation to the pot space time etc are similar conditions the jaina ethics and religion the most important part of jaina philosophy is its ethics metaphysics or epistemology in fact knowledge of any kind is useful for the jaina in so far as it helps him to right conduct the goal of right conduct again is salvation moksha uh, which means negatively uh, removal of all bondage of the soul and the positively the attainment of perfection the bondage of the bondage of the soul bondage means in indian philosophy in general the liability of the individual to birth and all consequent sufferings this general conception of bondage is differently interpreted by the different systems in the light of their ideas of the individual and the world the suffering individual for the jaina is a jiva or a living conscious substance called the soul the soul is inherently perfect it has infinitely infinite potentiality within infinite knowledge infinite faith infinite power in infinite bliss can all be attained by the soul if it can only remove from within itself all obstacles that stand in the way in the way just as the sun shines for shines for to illuminate the uh, entire world as soon as the atmosphere is freed of cloud and fog 
fog similarly the soul attains perfection when obstacles which infect the soul and overpower its natural qualities is removed in other words the limitations that we find in any individual soul are due to the material body with which the soul has identified itself uh, the body is made of particles of matter pudgala and for the uh, formation of a particular kind of a body particular kinds of matter particles are to be arranged and organized in a particular way in the formation of this body the guiding force is the soul's own uh, passions roughly speaking a soul acquires the body that it uh, inwardly craves for the karma or the sum of the uh, sum of the past life of a soul its past thought speech or and activity generates in it certain blind cravings and passions that seek satisfaction these cravings in a soul attract to it particular sorts of matter particles and organize them into the body unconsciously desired the soul with its passions or karma forces is therefore regarded by the uh, jaina as the organizer of the body the efficient cause of it whereas matter pudgala is said to be the material its material cause the organism which the soul thus acquires consists not simply of the uh, gross perceptible body but also the senses the manas uh, the vital forces and all other elements which curb and limit the soul's potentialities the body that we have inherited from our parents is not a mere chance acquisition our past karma determines the family in which we are born as well as the nature of the body its color stature shape longevity the nature of their number and nature of sense organs and motor organs which it possesses while all these taken collectively may be said to be due to karma taken also in the collective sense of the sum total of all tendencies generated in the past life each of these taken separately may be said to be due to a particular kind of karma the jaina therefore speaks of the many karmas and names each after the effect it produces for example the gotra karma is the karma that determines the family into which one is born uh, ayush karma is the karma determining the length of life and so on similarly we are told of the karma on the clouds knowledge jnana uh, varaniya that uh, which clouds faith uh, darsana va varaniya uh, darsana uh, varaniya that which produces delusion mohana uh, mohaniya that which produces emotions of pleasure and pain vedaniya and so on and so on the passions which cause bondage are anger pride infatuation and greed krodha mana moha and loba mm. these are called uh, kasaya sticky substances because the presence uh, of these in the soul which makes makes the matter particles stick to it as the nature and number of material particles attracted to the soul depend on its karma these particles themselves uh, come to be called karma matter karma putgala or even simply karma the flow of such karma matter into the soul is called therefore the influx uh, asrava of karma bondage in jaina philosophy comes therefore to mean the Uh, fact that jiva infected with passion takes up matter in accordance with its karma as passion or bad disposition bhava uh, of the uh, soul is the internal and the primary cause of bondage and the influx of matter asrava into the soul is only the effect of it uh, the uh, jaina writers point out that bondage uh, uh, bhava uh, uh, point out that uh, bondage or fall of the soul begins with thought they therefore speak sometimes of two kinds of bondage internal or ideal bondage that is the soul's bondage to bad disposition uh, bhava bandha and its effect material bondage that is the soul's actual association with matter uh, dravya bandha the interpretation of matter and soul which according to the jain as the nature of uh, bondage would appear to be crude to some but we should bear in mind that the soul for the jainas is not divided of extension but coextensive with living body the soul is the jiva the living being and in every part of it uh, every part uh, of the uh, living body we find matter as well as consciousness and therefore the compre- co- co- compressions or interpretation of matter and the conscious living substance that is the soul is as good as uh, as good a fact of experience Uh, as the interpretation of milk and water in a mixture of the two as of uh, or of fire and iron in a red hot iron ball liberation if bondage of the soul is its association with matter liberation must mean the complete dissociation of the soul from matter this can be attained by stopping the influx of new matter into the soul as well as by complete elimination of the matter from with which the soul has become already mingled the first process is called samvara that is the stoppage of influx the second nirjara nirjara that is exhaustion or wearing out of karma in the soul we have seen that the passions or cravings of the soul lead to the association of the soul with matter 
looking into the cause of the passions themselves we find that they ultimately spring from our ignorance our ignorance about the real nature of our souls and other things leads to anger vanity infatuation and greed knowledge alone can remove ignorance the jainas therefore stress the necessity of right knowledge samyag jnana or the knowledge of reality right knowledge can be obtained only by studying carefully the teachings of the omniscient tirthankaras or teachers who have already attained liberation and are therefore fit to lead others out of bondage but before we feel inclined to study their teachings we must have a general acquaintance with the essentials of the teachings and consequent faith in the competence of their of these teachers the right sort of faith based on general preliminary acquaintance called samyag darshana paves the way for right knowledge samyag jnana and is therefore regarded as indispensable but mere knowledge is useless unless it is put into practice right conduct samyag charitra uh, is therefore regarded by the jaina as the uh, third indispensable condition of liberation in right conduct ya yeah, man has to control his passions his senses his thought speech and action in the light of right knowledge this enables him to stop the influx of new karma and eradicate old karmas securing gradually thereby the elimination of matter which ties the uh, soul into bondage right faith right knowledge and right conduct have therefore come to be known in jaina ethics as the three gems teen uh, three ratna the chain in a good life in the very first sutra of uh, tatvadi uh, gama sutra uma swami states uh, this cardinal teaching of jainism the path to liberation lies through right faith knowledge and conduct liberation is the joint effect of these three right faith samyag darshana uma swami defines the right uh, right faith as the attitude of respect shraddha uh, towards uh, attitude shraddha also refers to faith uh, so right attitude of respect uh, towards truth this faith may be inborn and spontaneous in some by others it may be acquired by learning or culture in any case faith can arise only when the karmas that stand in its way that is the tendencies that cause disbelief or allayed or worn out it should not be thought that jainism wants its followers uh, to accept blindly what is taught by the tithankaras as manni badra a jaina writer states the attitude of the jaina is rationalistic rather than dogmatic and it is summed up in the following dictum i have no bias for mahavira and none against kapila and others reasonable words alone are acceptable to me who so whoever they might be the initial faith is a reasonable attitude first because it is based on some initial acquaintance and is proportionate uh, to this and secondly because without such faith there would be uh, no uh, incentive to further study even a skeptical skeptical philosopher who begins to study something rationally must possess some faith in the utility of his method and the subject he studies starting with a partial faith and studying further if the beginner finds that the jaina teachings are reasonable his faith increases the jaina claims that the more one studies these views the greater would faith fall grow perfect knowledge would cause uh, therefore perfect faith samyaga darshana right knowledge samyaga jnana while faith is initially based on knowledge of only the essentials of the jaina teachings right knowledge is as dravya sangraha states the detailed cognition of the real nature of the ego and non ego and is free from doubt error and uncertainty uh, we have already seen in connection with the jaina epistemology the different ways in which correct cognition can be obtained as in the case of faith so in the case of knowledge the existence of certain innate tendencies karmas stand in the way of correct knowledge for the attainment of perfect knowledge the removal of these karmas should be attempted perfection of this process ends in the attainment of absolute omniscience kevala jnana right conduct samyaga charitra right good conduct is briefly described in dravya samgraha uh, as refraining from what is harmful and doing what is beneficial in a word it is what helps the self to get rid of the karmas that lead him to bondage and suffering for the stoppage of the influx of new karmas and eradication of the old one must take the five great oaths panja mahavritta practice extreme carefulness samiti in walking speaking receiving alms and other things and answering calls of nature so as to avoid doing any harm to any life practice restraint gupti of thought uh, speech and bodily movements practice dharma of 10 different kinds namely forgiveness humility straightforwardness tr- truthfulness cleanliness self restraint austerity internal and external sacrifice non attachment and celibacy meditate on the cardinal truths taught regarding the self and the world 
conquer through fortitude all pains and discomforts that arise from hunger thirst heat cold etc and attain equanimity and pu- equanimity purity and uh, absolute greedlessness and perfect conduct but jaina writers are not anonymous regarding the necessity of the above steps some of them select the first namely the five great oaths as sufficient for perfection of conduct many of the other steps recommended are found to repeat in different ways the five ba- basic principle of these five the value of the five great oaths pancha mahavrata is recognized by the upanishadic thinkers as well as bauda uh, who teach the pancha sila the principles of most of these are recognized also in the commandments of the bible but the jainas try to practice these with a rigor uh, scarcely found elsewhere these oaths consist of the following ahimsa abstinence from all injury to life life as we have seen exists not simply in the moving things uh, moving beings trisa but also in some non moving ones stavara such as plants and beings inhabiting bodies of the earth the ideal of the jaina is therefore to avoid molesting life not only of the moving creatures but also of the non moving ones the jaina saints who try to follow the ideal are therefore found even to breathe through a piece of cloth tied over their noses lest they inhale and destroy the uh, life of any organism floating in the air ordinary layman would find this ideal too high they are advised therefore to begin with the partial observance of ahimsa by abstain abstaining from injury to uh, moving beings which are endowed with at least two senses the jaina attitude of ahimsa is the logical outcome of their metaphysical theory of the potential equality of all souls and recognition of the principle of recipro- reciprocity that is we should do to others as we would be done by it is unfair to think that ahimsa is the remnant of the savage Uh, primitive of, of our life as some critics have thought if every soul however lowly now can become as great as any other soul then one should recognize the value and the claims of every life as his own respect for life wherever found becomes then an irresistible duty the jaina tries to perform this duty in every minute act in life uh, because he wants to be thoroughly consistent with the basic principles he has accepted the jaina also thinks therefore that it is not sufficient simply not to take life uh, one should all not even think and speak of taking life nor even permit nor encourage others to take life otherwise the woe of ahimsa cannot be fully maintained satyam abstinence from falsehood this woe also is taken very rigorously truthfulness is not speaking what is only true but speaking what is true as well as good and pleasant without these qualifications the practice of truthfulness would be of little uh, use as an aid to moral progress because merely speaking what is true may sometimes descend into garrulity vulgarity frivolity vilification etc truth set as the ideal of this woe is sometimes called therefore sundrata to suggest the fuller meaning of truth which is also wholesome and pleasant it is also pointed out that for the perfect maintenance of this woe one must conquer greed fear and anger and even restrain the habit of jesting as asteyam abstinence from stealing this woe consists in not taking what is not given the sanctity of this of the property of others like that of their lives it is is recognized by the jainas a jaina writer uh, wittily remarks the wealth is but the outer life of man uh, and to rob wealth is to rob life if human life is impossible without wealth in some form or other there is no exaggeration in the jaina thought that depriving a man of his wealth is virtually to deprive him of an essential condition on which his life depends uh, this woe therefore may be said to be logically inseparable from the woe of ahimsa the sanctity of property being a logical consequence of the sanctity of life brahmacharyam abstinence from self indulgence this woe is generally interpreted as that of celibacy but the jaina attaches to this to also a great deeper meaning that raises the standard of this woe for above more sexual self continence it is interpreted as the woe to give up self indulgence kama of every form the jaina uh, bent on self criticism uh, discerns that uh, though outwardly indulgence may stop outward indulgence may stop it may continue still in subtle forms in speech in thought in the hopes of enjoyment hereafter in heaven even in asking or permitting others to indulge themselves for the complex complete maintenance of this woe one must therefore desist from all forms of self indulgence uh, external and internal subtle and gross mundane and extra mundane direct and indirect aparigraha abstinence from all attachment this is explained as the woe to give up all attachment for the object of the five senses 
pleasant sound, touch, color, taste and smell. As attachment to the world's objects means bondage to the world and the force of this causes rebirth. Liberation is impossible without the withdrawal of attachment. Knowledge, faith and conduct are inseparably bound up and the progress and degeneration of the one react on the other two. Perfection of conduct uh, goes hand in hand with the perfection of knowledge and faith. When a person through the harmonious Development of these three succeeds in overcoming the forces of all passions and karmas, old and new. The soul becomes free from its bondage to matter and attains liberation. Being free from the obstacles of matter, the soul realizes its inherent potentiality. It attains the fourfold perfection. Ananta Chatustaya, namely infinite knowledge, infinite faith, infinite power and infinite bliss. Jainism as a religion without God. Jainism presents along with Buddhism a religion without belief in God. The atheism of the Jainas is based on the following chief grounds. God is not perceived but sought to be proved through inference. The Jnaya holds for example that as every product like a house is the work of an agent Karta, the world which is a product must also have an agent or creator who is also God. But this inference is inconclusive because one of the premises the world is a product is doubtful. How is it? proved that the world is a product. It cannot be said that the world is a product because it has parts. Though Akasa has parts, it is not admitted by the Nyaya to be a product. It is said to be an eternal substance not produced by anything else. Again, wherever we perceive anything being produced, the producer or the agent is found to work on the material with his limbs. God is said to be bodiless. How can he then work on matter to produce the world? Like the existence of uh, God, the qualities of omnipotence, unity, eternity and perfection generally attributed to him are also doubtful. If God is omnipotent, he should be supposed to be the cause of all things. But this is not true because we perceive daily that many objects like houses, pots, etc. are not produced by God. God is held to be uh, one on the ground that if there are many gods, they would act with different plans and purposes and consequently a harmonious world as we have would not have been possible. But this argument is not sound because we observe that many human beings like Masons and even lower animals uh, build structures like palaces, anthills and hives. God again is said to be eternally perfect but eternal perfection is a meaningless epithet. Perfection is only a removal of imperfection and it is meaningless to call a being perfect who was never imperfect. Though the Jainas thus come to reject God as the creator of the world, they think it necessary to meditate on and worship the liberated perfect souls. Siddhas, the liberated souls possessing the godlike perfections mentioned already easily take the place of God. Prayers are offered to them for guidance and inspiration. The offering of prayers to five kinds of pure souls, uh, Pancha Paramesti, also forms a part of the daily routine of the devout Jainas. In spite of the absence of the create of a creator God, the religious spirit of the Jaina lacks neither in internal fervor. Uh, nor in external ceremonial expressions. By meditating on the pure qualities of the liberated and those who are advanced on the path to liberation, the Jaina reminds himself daily of the possibility of attaining uh, the high destiny. He purifies his mind by the contemplation of the pure and strengthens his heart for the uh, uphill journey to liberation. Worship for the Jaina is not seeking for mercy and pardon. The Jaina believes in the inexorable moral law of karma which no mercy can bend. The consequences of the past misdeeds can only be counteracted by uh, generating within the soul strong opposite forces of good thought, good speech and good action. Everyone must work out his own salvation. The liberated souls serve only as beckoned lights. The religion of the Jaina is therefore a religion of the strong and the brave. It is a religion of self-help. This is why the liberated soul is called a victor, Jina, and a hero, Veera. In this respect, it has some other parallels in India, in Buddhism, the Sankhya, and the Advaita Vedanta.